Welcome to XSS tutorial number 2, Non-Persistent Scripts. In this video we'll be looking at some very basic cross-site scripting in the form of non-persistent scripts. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. If you want to follow along and try out everything we learn, you can watch the Setting Up Our XSS Environment video. This will give you a legal and safe testing environment. The video will explain how to download and install the XEMP web server onto Windows and how to set up all the files for this tutorial series. Ok, what is a non-persistent script? Well it's just as the name describes, the script does not persist on the website. This means the attack only affects the user running the code directly. A benefit of trying a non-persistent attack is that any success with injecting a script may indicate that the website's creator may have forgotten protection in another section of the site. Now it's not very useful to attack yourself, so we need to be a little crafty. A non-persistent script can also be referred to as reflected cross-site scripting as we'll see why in just a moment. So what is reflected cross-site scripting? I personally like to make the distinction between non-persistent and reflected XSS. Reflected XSS is harnessed by attaching the malicious script to the end of a URL slash link. Though it may be obvious to see code in the end of a URL, there are many possible techniques of hiding it. Also, keep in mind that some less technical internet users would have no idea what to look for. In addition, link shortening services can make this a very deadly approach. So what can a reflected XSS attack do? Reflected attacks is the most popular cross-site scripting method of choice. For example, common attacks are things like redirect to a phishing site, steal cookie information, or even force the user to make an action like clicking on a button on the site they visit. Alright, let's move on to giving it a shot. The PHP code file can be found in the description. If you followed the setup tutorial, you should know where to put it. We'll try some very basic mucking around with some HTML tags, then we'll start trying out the JavaScript. Ok, so I'm going to come over to my web browser here, and I've got the tutorial open, and it's at my localhost forward slash xss forward slash 2. So for tutorial 2, we're in the 2 folder. So we've got this search field here. And it's just a very basic website and it's try my new search feature. And we can type in a search uh, term. So let's say we want to type in test and we hit search. Now we go, I haven't got any search results. So the results of your search for test is sorry, no results found. And we can also notice that up in the top bar of our uh, URL, we have the search parameter and the word test as the value. And this is because it's sent as get. OK, so let's see what happens if we put in a HTML tag. So let's try putting in the i tag for italics. And we won't close it. If we hit search now, we'll see that the rest of the page after the results for your search and it's invisible is all in italics, as we've opened up the italics tag but not closed it. Cool. So what what other things can we put in here? Let's try the font tag and we'll set the color to equal blue. And then we'll close off the font tag, but we won't end the font tag. We won't have a matching closing tag. And if we hit search, you'll notice that everything after our search term becomes blue. So it's actually placing this tag in where our search term would be printed back out. OK, so this is interesting. So let's see what we can do if we start using the script tag. So if we open up our tags again, we type script. And inside of our script tags, we're going to type alert, which is a pop-up box. And we're going to just alert XSX, the string XSS. Uh, XSS. And then we need to close off our script tag. So we don't actually have to close it but we want to make sure we don't cause any problems on the website. So we're going to close the script tag. Now if we hit search, you'll see that it pops up with the alert box saying XSS. So we've found a cross-site scripting vulnerability in this search. Now you can also see up the top we've got our search and it's also got the script code. If I was to send this link to somebody, uh, providing this was on a external web host, then they would get the same pop-up. 
as it would be trying to search the same term. Cool. So hopefully you get the basic idea. Let's quickly talk about the attack strategies you might employ to attack your victim or victims. The nice thing about reflected attacks is you can specifically target a certain victim through perhaps an email or an instant messaging service. Alternatively, if you were aiming to target a crowd of people, you could publish link to a website or social media trying to trick them into clicking it. Once again, URL shortening services make this much easier. In a later video, we'll also talk about other ways to hide the code. The next thing we'll be looking at is making our attacks stick with permanent scripts. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.